Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on electron configuration for GCSE students. Now, this video really relies on the, you having a secure understanding of the basics of chemistry. Um, I've got a video for that and on atomic structure, which I also have a video for. So if you're not confident with that stuff, make sure you have a look at that before you move on and tackle this video, because this won't make sense without that stuff. So what are we going to look at in this video? Well, three things. Firstly, the idea of electron shells. We met those briefly when we looked at the Bohr model, but we'll look at them in more detail today. Um, we're going to understand how to determine something called the electron configuration. This diagram there, that is an electron configuration. So we're going to look at how it is you make diagrams like that. And then the last thing is we'll look at the relationship between the electron configuration of an atom and its position on the periodic table. OK, so what are these electron shells that we keep talking about? Now, if you remember back to the Bohr model of atoms, the Bohr model of atoms tells us that all atoms have a nucleus in the middle, which contains the protons and the neutrons. So, for example, that there is our nucleus of a helium atom. OK. And orbiting around the nucleus are the electrons and they're orbiting in these different levels that we call shells. So if we look at helium, for example, helium has just the one shell of electrons with two electrons in it. Okay? But some atoms are more complicated than helium. So, for example, we've got carbon. Now, carbon's got two electron shells. It's they've got this inside shell that's still got two electrons in it, just like, um, just like um, helium does. But it's got this outer shell with four electrons in it. Um, and you can see one, two, three four electrons in that outer shell. And then we've got an even more complicated example like sodium. This time sodium has got three shells. It's still got the nucleus in the middle. It's got two electrons on its inside shell. Notice all these inside shells have got two electrons. Then the next one up has got two, four, six, eight electrons. And then it's got a third shell with another little lone electron um, stuck on the outside. So that's what we mean by these shells, because what we're saying is that the electrons orbit the nucleus at these different kind of set distances away uh, from it. So we saw on the previous slide that there are all these different electron shells around an atom. Now the arrangement of atoms, of electrons rather, in those shells is called the electron configuration, right? And to work out the electron configuration, we need to understand one key fact, which is this, that each shell can hold a certain number of electrons. So the first shell, this one is the closest to the nucleus. This one can hold a maximum of two electrons. Once it gets to two, it's full and it can't hold any more electrons. So then we go into the second and third shells. Now they can both hold up to eight electrons because they're further from the nucleus, so they're a bit bigger. So when we work out the electron configuration, we fill up the shells, the electron shells, from the inside first. So once the first shell is filled up with two electrons, then we move on to the second shell. Once that fi that's filled up with eight electrons, we move on to the third shell and so on. OK, so if we look at, for example, carbon, carbon has this electron configuration, two electrons in the first shell, one, two there, and then four electrons in the second shell, one, two, three, four, giving a total of six. And we can write that like this. We write it as two dot four. So two meaning two electrons in the first shell and the four meaning four electrons in the second shell. What about another one? Another example is sodium. So sodium, we saw that on the previous slide as well. So it's got the nucleus and it's got these three electron shells. It's got two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second shell and one in that final shell. So we can write that like this. We say two dot eight dot one, two for the first shell, eight for the second shell and one for that outside shell. OK, now this is important electron configuration because the number of electrons in each shell determines the chemical reactions that an atom does. And in some ways, we can just think about the whole of chemistry as being about the movement of electrons uh, between the outer shells of different atoms. OK, so the obvious question now is, given that we can see these different electron configurations, how do you work one out for yourself? So the way to answer that question is with an example. So we're going to start looking at the example of boron. 
Now to do this, we need to first of all know the atomic number of boron. In this case, it is five, which tells us that there are five electrons in each boron atom. Okay. So to do the configuration, we first of all write the symbol. So I've got a capital B in a little circle. Then I fill up my electron shells from the inside out. Now I need five electrons. So two of them go in the first shell. Now the first shell's full. So I move on to the second shell. I only need three more electrons to make it up to my total of five. So those three electrons go in that third shell. Um, and I can write that electron configuration as two for the first shell, dot three for the second shell. One little thing to notice is it doesn't matter where in each shell the electrons go. So don't worry about exactly what pattern. It's not important. Example number two, which is silicon. Again, let's find the atomic number, which is 14, which tells us that we have 14 electrons in each silicon atom. So then I write the symbol, in this case, SI for silicon in a little circle. Then I fill up my shells. So two electrons go in that first shell. That's now full. So we move on to the second shell. Now, we want a total of 14 electrons. Two in the first shell, eight go in the second shell. Now the second shell is full and I've still got four electrons to go to make up to 14. So I put the remaining four in that third shell as well. And I write that as 2.8.4, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell and four in the outer shell. OK, so our third and final example is calcium. Now, calcium is, is, has got the atomic number 20, which means that it's got 20 electrons. So to do the configuration, start in the same way. We're going to write the symbol Ca for calcium. Then we start to fill up our shells. So two electrons go in that first shell, but we want to get up to 20. So we've still got 18 to go. So let's go into our second shell. Now, our second shell is full up when we get eight. But we've uh, once it's got eight electrons, but we've still got 10 to go. So now we need to go into our third shell. The third shell is also full at eight electrons. So now we've still got two electrons left. So we're going to go into our fourth shell and put the last two electrons in that fourth shell. Uh, and we can see that there, those two electrons in that outer shell. So to write that electrical configuration, we go two for the first shell, eight for the second shell, eight for the third shell, and then two in that fourth shell, the outer shell. Now, we only need to be able to do this for atoms up to the atomic number 20. So that is he hydrogen all the way to calcium. Beyond that, it gets more complicated and you will not be asked. OK, so now we're going to look at um, the relationship between the electron configuration and the periodic table. Now, the periodic table is organized into rows which we call periods. The first row is at the top here. It's just got two things in it, hydrogen and helium. Then we've got period two period three, period four, and so on going down. OK, we've also got these columns and the columns we call groups. So this first column is group one. The second column is group two, group three, all the way up to group zero as well. OK, now the really cool thing is that the electron configuration and the period table are directly related. So the period number actually tells us the number of electron shells. And the group number tells us the number of electrons in the outer shell. How does that work in practice? Let's look at some examples. So boron, for example, boron is just here. So it is in period two. OK, so period two and group three. And look, it's got two, two electron shells because it's in period two and it's got three electrons in its outer shell because it's in group three. What about silicon? Well, silicon is here in period three and group four. So it has three electron shells, one, two, three, because it's in period three, and four electrons in the outer shell because it's in group four. And then finally, we've got calcium, which is over here. Calcium is just there. So it's in peri uh, period four and group two. And look, it's got four electron shells, one, two, three, four, and it's got two electrons in the outer shell. And that is the relationship between the electron uh, configuration and the periodic table. So that is this video done. As always, well done if you got to the end.